Good morning, welcome back to Maxim's Inside Track. Uh, happy St. Patrick's Day to all, and especially our Irish friends and, and colleagues out there. Uh, we'll be having a Guinness later on to uh, help you celebrate this day. Uh, some interesting things happening around the world. We've got uh, COVID vaccines still rolling out uh, globally. Um, EU working their way through, sort of coming out of lockdown. Uh, that should um, come through April, May, and then into June and, and free up. Uh, uh, hopefully from there. Uh, we've got global milk flows still up about one and a half percent around the world. Uh, we've got some extremely strong milk prices uh, in Oceania, um, in particular in New Zealand. Uh, Australian milk prices have come up, which is exciting. Uh, still got logistics challenges, which uh, everyone's working through. Uh, hopefully seeing it free up a little bit, but we haven't seen it to date. So it is becoming still extremely frustrating frustrating uh, working through that. Um, yeah, we're seeing NZ come under a little bit of pressure around their waterways and potentially uh, dairy uh, polluting it. Uh, we're seeing milk in New Zealand capping out um, for the moment. Uh, that'll remain to be seen. Starting this one with full cream milk powder. Um, off slightly, um, or six odd percent off, but uh, this is after a 21 percent jump on the GDT platform two weeks ago go. So even with uh, Fonterra allocating another 8,000 plus ton over the coming sort of six weeks, um, a great result I would have thought uh, for, for whole milk powder. Still significant China demand uh, being fueled by Southeast Asia demand as well, sort of propping this up. So um, yeah, very high uh, domestic milk prices in China, strong R&B to US dollar and, uh, and still um, espousing the the qualities of uh, of dairy um, as a as an immune prevention in China. So uh, yeah, very very solid demand out of that region and. Whole milk powder could remain firmish for the coming little while. However, I think it may trail off coming into new season. Moving on to skim milk powder now, uh, another positive result on the GDT platform, only just uh, up 0.7 of a percent, but uh, still feeling firmish across all regions, uh, USA, Oceania, and, uh, and EU. Um, seeing solid demand out of uh, Asia, Southeast Asia in particular for skim milk powder. There is about 100,000 odd tonne of Indian skim hanging over the market, uh, and just as to how that may play out. Um, how However, seeing skim relatively firmish, at least for the next quarter and, and potentially uh, beyond that, um, it may soften a, a little bit, um, a bit further out, but uh, yeah, pretty firm for the moment. Moving on to the fats now, butter and AMF. Uh, a little bit of a mixed result here on the GDT. Uh, butter down slightly and AMF up slightly. However, still really solid results for, for the fat products. Uh, we're starting to see uh, US prices on, on butter increase slightly off sort of February lows. This may continue as it's still significantly cheaper than any uh, other fats around the world. So whilst it sits that far below, Low, uh, I think demand will continue to be um, focused on that region. Still working through shipping and uh, logistics challenges, but um, slowly, uh, you know, uh, freeing up that port congestion and um, should be uh, should be product available out of the U.S. They are starting to make an 82% fat uh, unsalted product, which is um, similar to what uh, other regions around the world are making. So um, that's certainly an option. Uh, European prices have started to drift off a little bit. Um, they sort of uh, were lowish and then firmed and then now sort of drifting off uh, off again. So it'd be interesting uh, to see that food service demand um, open back up in the, in the coming months and whether that increases demand over there. Uh, I see this fat market as relatively firmish um, once again for the next little period and um, as we come into new southern hemisphere milk season may start to, uh, to free up a little bit from there. Moving on to uh, Cheddar now. Uh, over in the US, we're seeing the food box program coming to a close at the end of April. Uh, the government is saying that it will uh, offer some stimulus to the dairy sector. However, it won't be in the, uh, the uh, a food box type program. So uh, that'll be interesting to see how that plays out over there. Uh, we're seeing these markets reasonably balanced and, and firmish for, for Cheddar and, and mozzarella. 
retailer. Uh, some good demand in retail sales in the US uh, with the uh, Biden stimulus package. We're also seeing pretty good uh, food service demand over in that region. Um, yeah, Oceana prices are, are firmish. There is product available, however, uh, relatively firm. Um, we, we, as a whole, we're seeing uh, demand relatively strong for dairy products as a whole, um, in particular around uh, just building some surplus inventory to cover off these uh, shipping delays. So it feels like demand is, is strong in general um, as people are, are trying to build that buffer um, just to uh, prevent any out of stock. So yeah, seeing the whole dairy sector pretty firmish and that's obviously uh, reflective uh, in cheddar cheese and mozzarella, so yeah pretty steady as she goes for this category. On to the carbohydrates now, lactose and whey. Uh, seeing once again very strong demand in particular out of China and Southeast Asia. Um, some manufacturers in the US uh, are claiming that they're in a sold out position on these products. Uh, yeah, so I think it'll continue to remain firm. That flows into the, the proteins, WPC80, firmish, and uh, WPC, uh, WPI less so, but um, yeah, solid demand for, for carbohydrates uh, as, a, as a, a milk solids um, into various applications, but in particular into uh, China for repopulating that um, swine herd. That rounds out Maxim's Inside Track. Have a great fortnight. Chat to you soon. Thank you.